Today we are in Switzerland. We're going to go to Henwil and check out the BMW Sauber F1 Teams facility. Andy gets a chance of a lifetime to visit the facility where he will get a first-hand look at how the BMW Sauber F1 car is designed, manufactured and tested. We're going to go into the clean room right now, but before that, everyone has got to step into this white strip so that you leave any kind of particle from your shoes behind. And this is where all the carbon fiber parts are laminated. This is a mold of the driver's seat in an F1 car where a layer of carbon fiber will be put on it and later on it will be sent to the autoclave, which is like an oven, where it will be basically be cured and from there it will start to harden and become stiff as a beginning product of the seat. It's here that the overall strength and weaknesses of the vehicle is researched. The design phase balances accuracy and precision while not compromising practicality. The design tool, as it is called, is the basis of an F1 vehicle. Here, a layer of carbon fiber is molded to the shape of the finished design tool. The use of a hairdryer makes it easy to shape and mold the carbon fiber sheet. The sheet of carbon fibers is made up of strands of carbon fibers woven to form a mat and covered in resin. Carbon fibers are stored at a temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius. Once at room temperature, the resin part will get sticky, making handling it very difficult. Usually carbon fibers are woven, but this one is a unidirectional, where it adds specific strength. Look at that. Just one, one direction. One of the usages of the unidirectional carbon fiber is at the rear wing flap of the car. Now this is the tool to make the rear wing flap. It has the same process as the seat. The carbon fiber has a non-uniform structure. This means that it is possible to direct externally applied forces across the chassis and dissipating them. How this is done is by strategically placing the pieces of carbon fiber in particular directions. Now they're going to put a layer of plastic over the carbon fiber to protect it. And then they're going to put a layer of fleece on top, which is called the breather. And after all that, they're going to cover it with a vacuum bag. After the layer of plastic is laid, the rear wing flap is covered with fleece to enable it to breathe. Then it's placed in a plastic bag and vacuum sealed. The vacuum ensures the carbon fiber is pressed firmly onto the design tool to assist in the curing process later in the autoclave. Now it's off to the autoclave for some serious high-tech baking. This is the autoclave. It is where all the carbon fiber parts are cured. And different parts actually take up a different amount of time. It ranges from about 30 minutes to 29 hours. The autoclave exposes the carbon fiber to a mix of heat, pressure, and vacuum. This enables the resin in the carbon fiber to be activated, which basically means the carbon fiber gets real tough and fits the mold exactly. We should catch up with the finished part later. Meanwhile, Andy is snooping around in the facility. We're now in the electronics workshop and we are at the steering wheel station. As you know in F1, each driver has got their own customized steering wheel. These steering wheels are not cheap by any means. With a price tag exceeding 20,000 euros, you definitely won't find it in your normal everyday car. With a mixture of carbon, titanium, aluminium, steel and rubber components, the F1 steering wheel has over 120 individual parts and takes approximately 80 man hours to build. Well, you've seen the electronic side of a steering wheel. Now let's have a look at the steering wheel itself. Here we go. Ugh. Ah, here you go. This is the front of the steering wheel. Uh, lots of buttons on it. Uh, this one over here is the pit lane speed limiter. Of course, when you want to go into the pit lane, you got to reduce the speed and this will control the whole thing. And over here, if you want to drop the neutral gear, just a button away. And we've got radio, if the driver wants to communicate with the team, just a button away as well. And interestingly enough, we have a drink button. If the driver wants a drink, simple as a button away as well. And more importantly, at the back, uh, this is uh, how you change gears. This is up to upshift on the right side. And downshift on the left one. And these two down here is the clutches, you know. 
can use it that way because in the car you only have two pedals, one for acceleration and the other one's for brakes. So yeah, pretty much about that. You're looking at the headrest uh, of the F1 car. It may look as solid as the rest of the parts of the car, but it's actually more softer than that. And it's made out of this, the FIA foam. Look at how it forms into shape back again. There you have it. Well, uh, this is a safety device and it works well with the Han system, which is the head and neck support system. I can show it to you right here. There you go. This is uh, the Han system, which protects the neck, head. There you go. Works well. Safety is top priority. It is crucial to ensure top quality protection and prevention devices in and around the F1 car. Andy, stop climbing around and get back to work. And here is the final product of the rear wing. And this is the rear wing flap that we put in the autoclave earlier. Now, during race, the rear wing takes up about 600 kilos of downforce, but amazingly enough, it is quite light. Voila. Technology has made it possible for the motorsports industry to progress rapidly over the years. Various angles have been considered and the end product that you see takes some serious planning and development, well before the F1 car even reaches the racetrack.